Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about the difference between osteoarthritis and the rheumatoid arthritis. So in short, we can write the osteoarthritis as OA and the rheumatoid arthritis as RA. Now the first point of difference is that the osteoarthritis is degenerative joint disease. It is what? It is a degenerative joint disease. While the rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic autoimmune inflammatory disease. It's a chronic autoimmune inflammatory disease. Second point is that the osteoarthritis usually affects the people over 50 years. Okay, usually the people over 50 years, while the rheumatoid arthritis affects the people around 20 years. Then, the osteoarthritis, uh, it is basically caused by the repeated biomechanical stress or there can be some genetic factors as well. So, by the repeated biomechanical stress, we mean that there is a prolonged uh, pressure over the joints. Okay, so biomechanical stress and the rheumatoid arthritis is caused by unknown etiology. Okay, so the etiology of it is not uh, very much clear or uh, but it is said that it is caused by some genetic predisposition okay so there is genetic predisposition so the genes which are involved in the rheumatoid arthritis these are the hla or the ptpn22 and some environmental factors are also responsible for it then in the osteoarthritis Osteoarthritis typically affects the one particular area or the joint. So it affects one particular area or joint while the rheumatoid arthritis affects the multiple joints. It is going to affect the multiple joints all over the body and it mainly affects the small joints. Then in the osteoarthritis, we cannot see any extra articular manifestation, right? Like the fatigue or something like that. So there is no extra articular manifestation while in the rheumatoid arthritis, there is the extra articular lesions in the skin, in the heart, in the blood vessels, as well as in the lungs. Then in osteoarthritis, what we can see is the heberden nodes, okay? The heberden nodes are present here. And what are these heberden nodes? These are basically the osteophytes. And these osteophytes are present at the distal interphalangeal joints. Then in the rheumatoid arthritis, there are no such nodes or osteophytes that are seen, okay? Now the inflammation. So the inflammation in the osteoarthritis is minimal, okay? Inflammation is it's minimal. And while in the case of rheumatoid arthritis, the inflammation is intense, all right? In the osteoarthritis, it was mild. Then the osteoarthritis, there is a local production of the cytokine which is responsible for the disease progression. So there are some cytokines which are playing their role and while in the rheumatoid arthritis, the cellular and the humoral immune response is responsible for the rheumatoid arthritis. Right in the cellular, especially we can see the CD4 T cells, okay, which are the helper cells, they are responsible for the disease and in the humoral we have the antibodies okay in the humoral uh, what you can see is that the IgM and the IgA they get bind to the FC portion of the IgG antibody okay so it means that they are acting against our own antibodies these are known as rheumatoid factors so it means that in the rheumatoid arthritis we can see the rheumatoid factors all right so it was mediated by the cellular and the humoral immunity what else we can see in the osteoarthritis so Okay, in the osteoarthritis, we have some other things as well. It is the bone hibernation. We can also see subchondral sclerosis and there are joint mice. Oh, wow. You must be curious about it. What are these joint mice? But we will discuss it later. And we have the fibrous. Okay, so there are some fibrous wall cyst. Then some osteophytes. Okay, these can be seen in the 
osteoarthritis only okay so these osteophytes are not present in the rheumatoid arthritis and as well as many of these things are not present in the rheumatoid arthritis but yes one distinguishing feature is that in the rheumatoid arthritis we can see the ankylosis okay what we can see the ankylosis and what is this ankylosis it is a fusion of the bones and we can see fibrous ankylosis and the bony ankylosis all right then uh, what else can we see in this rheumatoid arthritis is the penis and the inflammation as i've told you that it is very much intense in this case so inflammation okay yes and one more point i forgot to tell you is that these antibodies which were formed they are going to respond against the citrullinated proteins okay so they are going to act against the citrullinated proteins Okay, now in the osteoarthritis, the ESR, CRP, and the anti CCP they are raised. While in case of the rheumatoid arthritis, they remain unchanged. Okay, so there is no change in the ESR, in the CRP, in the in the anti CCP levels. Then the treatment. So what can be the treatment here in the osteoarthritis? There is no effective treatment you can say, but we can manage the pain. All right, we can manage the pain. We can give the answers for uh, reducing the inflammation, and the corticosteroids can be given. Corticosteroids can be given intra-articularly, right? So in order to decrease the inflammation again, and then the activities can be modified. Activity modification. Then, if it is very much severe. Then in that case you can go for the arthroplasty. You means patient, okay? Not you. <laughs> then in the treatment uh, for the rheumatoid arthritis. So in the rheumatoid arthritis, as you know that the TNF they are going to play its major role in the rheumatoid arthritis. That is why if we are going to treat the patient with the anti-TNF, it means the TNF antagonist. So this is going to be very much beneficial for the patient, right? So TNF antagonist. And we can also uh, treat the patient with the corticosteroids and the methotrexate, so that can also be beneficial. Now let's discuss the two types of the osteoarthritis that are primary and the secondary osteoarthritis. So the primary osteoarthritis is because of unknown causes, all right, and this accounts for ninety percent of the cases. Then the secondary osteoarthritis has some predisposing conditions, right? And these predisposing conditions can be like the joint deformity. right joint deformity or if there is any previous joint injury or if there is any underlying systemic disease so these are underlying systemic disease so these are the two types of the osteoarthritis okay guys in the next part we will quickly revise the pathogenesis of these uh, two conditions and then we will also discuss about some other types of arthritis in our next video okay so stay tuned and thanks for watching